Yes, good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Paul, and good morning to viewers. Um, my name is Richard Brescianini. I'm an executive director at uh, Heavy Rare Earths. I'm very pleased to be presenting this morning. Uh, next slide, please. And the one after. Thank you. Um, this is our value proposition. Um, uh, I I'm assuming that most of you are in rare earths, but it, uh, it does bear repeating that there are ongoing supply side issues and a very, very robust and surging demand side uh, to the equation, particularly in e-mobility and, and wind energy. And despite rare earth prices coming off over the past 12 months, uh, these two facts should support or will support a high price environment in the future. Our key project is uh, Kaolinia in Western Australia. It's a, it's a clay hosted project. Um, and of course, Western Australia is one of the world's premier mining jurisdictions. We have a maiden resource uh, at Kaolinia that we brought to market uh, when we listed uh, 28 million tonnes at 625 parts per million total rare earths, um, enriched to the tune of 25% of the composition in the four magnet rare earths, Prisidimium. Neodymium, terbium, and dysprosium. Uh, we have new mineral resources due uh, in the third quarter of this year uh, after a very substantial drilling program that we undertook in the latter part of 2022 to build on the current resource base. We have very focused metallurgical program that we only uh, up updated the market with uh, in the last couple of days. Those results justify accelerating our metallurgical program with an increased focus on downstream development. We have discovery upside as well as part of our value proposition uh, with, a, with a maiden expiration target also due to be declared for Kaolinia uh, in quarter three. And we're gonna be on the ground for the first time uh, undertaking the grassroots expiration at our Duke project in the Northern Territory, also uh, in in quarter three. We have a strong team uh, led by myself, but um, we're supported very, very strongly by some key technical and operational consultants who I name there in, that, uh, in this particular slide. And of course, we have John Byrne at the helm. Many of you would know John. And John and I are always keeping a very, very close eye on what all of this work means at Caldinia in so far as the ability to commercialise that operation. Here's our corporate snapshot, a uh, little table there on the left. We have uh, 68 million shares on issue. Our market cap's around $7 million at 10 cents a share. We're currently trading at 11. We have uh, $2.6 million in the bank uh, as at the end of the first quarter of this year, no debt, and an EV of a very low EV of $4.4 million. Next slide, please. Okay, let's go straight into Kaolinia. Uh, it's, a, it's a clay hosted project, 100% owned by HRE. It's on about 250 square kilometres of tenements. Those tenements are on unallocated crown land, uh, not, on, uh, not on farmland, around uh, 110 kilometres northeast of the deep water port of Esperance and about 45 kilometres east of the Coolgardie Esperance Highway and rail line. So it's uh, reasonably located with respect to uh, local infrastructure. Mineralisation is flat lying, extensive uh, horizons of rare earths in saprolite, uh, very similar in, in tenor to the Chinese iron absorption clay deposits, which are, of course, the world's main supply of heavy rare earths and also uh, add a lot to the NDPR um, cohort as well. Drilling uh, in 2021 by the company before it listed, uh, established the pro project's maiden inferred mineral resource stated there, but we've since drilled uh, a lot since, uh, since that time and uh, made a lot more uh, rare earth discoveries on the tenement. And finally, our metallurgical test work in both 2022 and 2023 has delivered excellent results, which we'll go on to explain later. Next slide, please. Little more into, uh, into Kaolinia, uh, we'll deal with the first aspect, uh, which is all around building the resources for the project, which really establishes the project capacity and longevity. In uh, late 2022, we, after listing, we drilled uh, 441 holes, uh, nearly 12,600 12, metres. This built on the 109 holes drill 
to establish the 28 million tonne resource. Drilling discovered substantial new western zone. You can see on the map on the right there, the location of the western zone by comparison to the Kaolinia North and South deposits, which make up the resource. So a very extensive uh, zone of rare earth mineralization, uh, around 13 square kilometers adjacent to the existing resources. Significant drill intercepts are listed there uh, in those dot points. And you can see that those grades are far, far higher than our average resource grade um, of 625 ppm. Those, uh, in addition to the, uh, to the mineralized intercepts uh, close to the current resource in the western zone, we also drilled, you can see on the map there, some lines of holes uh, distant from the western zone, up to 14 kilometers distant from the western zone, where we again intersected some quite substantial developments of rare earth mineralization in saprolite. And there's a couple of the uh, intercepts listed there, in, again, with grades that far exceed the average resource grade at Kaolinia North and South. Consequently, on the, on the basis of the mineralization we intersected both in the Western zone and far field from the resource, we're anticipating a material increase in mineral resources to be delivered in quarter three. And we're also expecting a maiden exploration target to be declared for the project in the same quarter. So those are coming up in the very near future. And in my view, something to get quite excited about. Next slide, please. So whilst we were talking about resources, that's only half of the, the equation. And uh, one would argue that this is probably the more important half of the equation, which is really the metallurgy, which is, of course, the key to technical and commercial viability for Kaolinia and all rare earth projects. We've been making excellent progress in metallurgy, although we've only made two disclosures to the market, uh, one in December last year and one just a couple of days ago. These things take time and uh, a lot of hard work has been really put forward by strategic metallurgy and ably backed up by our metallurgical consultant, Gavin Beer. The next, the, the second and third dot points really sum up the work that we have completed, which is uh, quite exciting. Simple screening recovers almost 82% of the magnet rare earths on average, uh, maximum of nearly 92%, in an average of 42% of the feed mass. The minimum that we've achieved in the feed mass is 27%. Of course, the lower the number in the feed mass, the better. The higher the number in recovery, the better. And that feed mass, in, in, in being able to screen uh, rare earths into that feed mass, we've been able to achieve an almost twofold increase in grade. So once again, I'll just restate, with simple screening, We've been able to recover nearly 82% of magnet rare earths on average in 42% of the feed mass. And we've been able to achieve an almost twofold increase in grade in that process. Those results were actually delivered to the market last December, but we restated those results in the market announcement we made a couple of days ago. And those results are also shown in the table on this slide. In the third dot point really sums up what we've just what we've been doing more recently in the leaching space. Our, diagno our diagnostic leaching has achieved an 83%, an almost 83% extraction of magnet rare earths with a maximum of 91% by consuming just 18.1 kilograms of hydrochloric acid per tonne of fines material and we've been able to actually achieve 3.8 kilograms per tonne. Those are very, very low hydrochloric acid consumptions. So again, I'll restate that. We've been able to recover or to extract nearly 83% of our magnet rare earths by consuming just an average of 18 kilograms per tonne of acid. So we've got an eye in that particular statement on both the revenue side of the business being able to extract 82% of the rare earths, as well as the cost side. And that's really the most important thing to have come out of the last round of metallurgical test work, is that we're maximizing the revenue potentially 
from high extractions of rare earths, of magnet rare earths, and keeping a very close eye at the same time on the cost side of the business, which is very, very low consumption of hydrochloric acid. By the way, we also tried sulfuric acid and ammonium sulfate, but by far, hydrochloric acid was able to deliver the best results insofar as extraction of rare earths and consumption of that reagent. And finally, these results that I've just disclosed to you have, is justifying accelerating, in our view, our metallurgical program to produce a mixed rare earth carbonate product and samples of that product, which represents really the first exit point for heavy rare earths into the rare earth supply chain. And those samples will be produced with an eye on customer assessments so that we can ensure that we meet the very strict product specifications of refiners, which is necessary to be able to find this material eventually into rare earth permanent magnets. So we're very, very excited about these metallurgical results because really it's the key to making the project work. This has been done on 13 composites from across the Kaolinia North and South deposit. We're about to extend that by another 50 samples. We'll be out in the field collecting those metallurgical composites, and that will be the basis of further announcements in the not too distant future. Uh, thank you very much for today, and I'm very, very happy to take questions. Got plenty of questions for you, Richard. Uh, let's kick off. Uh, the deposit appears to be a clay hosted uh, deposit. How does your deposit compare to other iconic clay hosted deposits currently being evaluated in Australia? How do the and how do the extraction rates compare? Well, in terms of the uh, the size of deposit, um, we're still at the very modest stage at 28 million tonnes. But as I've as I've stated, um, we're expecting a material increase in our mineral resources for the project uh, in the uh, in the third quarter this year. So. You know, we, I think investors can expect uh, quite a large increase there, certainly in tonnes and probably an increase in grade as well. How that compares to others, there are only a couple of others out there within Australia that have actually declared mineral resources. So in my view, it compares very, very favourably. In terms of the metallurgical extractions, uh, I would say that we are looking very, very good. Uh, certainly internally, we, we hold that view very, very strongly and with our metallurgical consultants. And in relation to how they compare to other players out there, I would say that those numbers that we've, uh, that we've put out there in terms of both extractions and most importantly, our consumption of our main reagent compares extremely favourably to our peers in the sector. Yeah, okay. And uh, how does your deposit compare to the China-based deposits and the metallurgy? China-based deposits um, generally start with lower head, head grade. They So in terms of our grade, I think our grade compares quite favourably. Uh, they, have very, they have vast deposits, so I'd say on a tonnage basis, we don't quite compare there. But of course, they're under pressure environmentally, so that there is some pressure for them to continue to produce at the rates in which they do. In terms of recoveries, well, their recoveries are quite low, but their cost base is very, very low as well. So they can probably afford the lower recoveries. Uh, we, on the other hand, are keeping an eye on both sides of the equation, high recoveries for high revenues, low consumption of our main reagents to keep costs down. Gotcha. And look, you've already uh, answered this question, but I'm gonna, answer, I'm gonna ask, ask it again, because I, I know you'd like to answer it again. What amount of acid are you, what amount of acid are you utilizing to extract the higher numbers? So, so we're looking at an average of 18.1 kilograms per tonne of fines material. So we're talking about the sub 25 micron material where most of our rare earths are contained. So that's on a per, per tonne of fines material. In our announcement, and I just cannot remember the, the, the number off the top of my head, but um, investors can go back to our recent announcement of a couple of days ago where we expressed that consumption in terms of what, it, what amounts to plant feed or what would, would, would potentially be plant feed, which would be the bulk saprolite material. I seem to recall it's roughly around 7.6 tonnes per, sorry, 7.6 kilograms per tonne of saprolite, bulk saprolite feed versus the 18.1 per tonne of, of, uh, of fines material. 
I've got you. And how does the asset volume impact the economics of, of the project? Uh, massively. Um, w- without question, the consumption of acid is the, is the single largest cost impost uh, in the upstream part of the process. Absolutely no question. I can't give you a percentage on it, but it is a very, very major consideration, which is why we are quite happy to disclose those numbers because we understand that those numbers are very, very low and stands the project in good stead. Gotcha. And when do you anticipate the announcement of your new mineral resource numbers? I'd say in September of this year um, is what we're looking at. So it's a, you know, the latter part of, of, the, uh, of the third quarter. Um, and we can also expect to see an expiration target. Um, possibly we would be looking at uh, a metallurgical announcement before then, but really we like to, uh, to disclose results rather than just ongoing pro- progress. And, you know, optimization of the results that we've put out there so far is just something that you have to do. So that's really the next step for us is to is to optimize the results that we've we've put out there insofar as the extraction and consumption numbers are concerned. And then beyond that, it's all about uh, giving ourselves um, even even further uh, robustness to those numbers by by putting a lot more through diagnostic leaching, another 50 samples, not just stopping at the 13 that we've done. And in that, we're looking at, at, at only, only focusing on what we call preferred material, which is material that delivers both uh, high extractions of rare earths and low consumptions of acid. It's no use reporting numbers where you only get high recoveries of rare earths if you have high extraction, high, reco- high um, consumptions of acid. So we're only interested in, in, in letting investors know when we've got a potential commercial situation on our hands not a not a non-commercial situation on our hands. Yeah, no, hear you loud and clear. And uh, a little probing question here: Have you had any discussions with uh, this stage with any potential offtake partners? Uh, not not in uh, the heavy rare earths realm, but in my previous um, role at Arafura Resources, where I've worked in in rare earths for fourteen years, I certainly established a lot of contacts um, in the refining and offtake space. And um, uh, so I know where to go uh, when the time is right for us to make those approaches. And that will probably be closer to the time where we're producing samples of mixed rare earth carbonate for the assessment of refiners and and potentially uh, end users as well. Uh, It's good to know you've got those guys on your speed dial. (laughs) And just to finish up, uh, Richard, how is the balance sheet looking currently? And are you comfortably funded for your current program? Uh, we are comfortably funded for the current program. Um, uh, of course, the, uh, the the main draw in our funds was was during the time that we drilled and and the subsequent assay. So all of that's behind us. So what we're looking at now, moving forward over the next uh, say six months, is expenditure more around our metallurgical program. Um, that's pretty modest expenditure by comparison to drilling and assaying. I've got to say, uh, we're trying to keep those costs. Very, very tight. We, we're not we're not doing large scale piloting at this point in time, where costs usually begin to escalate. We're keeping things at small scale, which is more than enough for us to be able to uh, optimize our process, our process flow sheet, and produce samples for customer assessment. And the only other uh, expenditure that we're we're considering over the next six months is, of course, first stage soil sampling at Duke, um, which again is is a fairly low cost exercise. Richard, many thanks for your time today. We'd love to get you back on uh, later in the year and we wish you and the whole team the best of luck for the uh, for the rest of the year. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for the opportunity, Paul.